Hello, in this video we're going to start looking at how to begin our basic MMORPG combat validations and this is essentially a, a, an extension to the previous post where we've started to introduce combat in our game. So now what we're going to start doing is enhancing that combat. So for example now I'm going to be adding uh, distance validation as well uh, as angular validations to make sure that my character is next to the mob and is also facing the mob as well. So there's a couple of extra features that I've implemented in here and we're, we're going to have a look at those in a demo shortly. As usual, all of the custom server code can be found in GitHub and um, all of the Unreal Engine implementations can be found in this post. So let's get started with a quick demo. Okay, so let's start this up. So we're going to have our game starting as play standalone, but we're also going to spawn a UE server which will control some mobs in the background. So you can see it's um, starting up that server here. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to log into the game using this character. Uh, while the server is loading, what I'll demonstrate as well is uh, I've implemented some HP regeneration. So for example, when I'm equipping an item, it also adds some max HP. So you can see that uh, my health is uh, slowly going up and it will keep going up until it hits the max HP. So this is purely backend implementation. Uh, and as usual, I've got my stats uh, component just basically highlighting those changes as well. So the new changes that I've done here are to allow me to begin combat. So for example, I'm able to click the button T and you can see it starts the combat. If the monster moves too far away, you can see that it says too far away. And um, there's also going to be instances where uh, I'm not going to be facing the target. So if I look back, you, you can see that it's uh, telling me that I, I need to face the target. So it's only going to give me this validation when I'm actually uh, valid to start attacking. And also, it's not going to spam me these error messages. So um, it'll only send me one message per three seconds at most. And I'm able to change my target. So um, I've implemented to attack the nearest target now. So if I come closer to a different target, it will attack the other one. And um, you can see that I'll still be able to finish the mob off. And it will again link to the uh, auto spawner system to spawn the new mob. Um, after a short delay. So that's what we're going to be looking at uh, implementing here. So perhaps we'll begin with this active notification component. So uh, what this widget does, it will display the uh, validation results or uh, when the validation fails from the server. So uh, the server handles all of the position and uh, the rotation validation and um, it will feed back the results when those failed. So I want to use this widget to display that result. And you, as you can see, it's quite a simple widget really. So I've got a simple size box and inside that I've got this rich text block component and um, I needed to define this text style in order to use this uh, rich text block. So in order to define that, um, you're able to create uh, under miscellaneous and then there's a data table. And I think here we just need to type rich text box style row. Yeah, and uh, just click uh, OK and create that. And um, inside there, you can just define the style that you like. So uh, you need to create a default um, entry and um, style it as you like. So I, I just wanted um, something sort of in red in color. Um, and after you've styled it, you're able to then uh, use this text box to put whatever messages you like. So I've also implemented this uh, pop-up um, animation. So uh, what that will do is basically it will uh, change the render opacity of uh, this text box. So you're able to um, uh, select the opacity um, over here. So um, you can see that there's this um, keyframe component. So as you're moving along, you're able to just modify this uh, render capacity. You click the add keyframe and then it will lock it in. So you can see that I'm simply um, alternating this render opacity, making it go up and down, but slowly fading away over time. So uh, that's how I achieve this um, animation in my component. Um, and yeah, that's um, really it for this component. I just also needed to uh, link it inside my main component. So inside uh, modules, I have this, um, I think it's general widget. So this is where my widgets will just basically sit. And you can see uh, that I've added my active notification inside this viewport, which is always visible 
when the player logs in. So I'm able to hide these other widgets um, based on my button presses by default, they will actually be hidden. Um, so I'm able to load all my widgets in here. Uh, I think that just makes things a little bit easier going forward. So let's see how we populate the message inside here next. So as usual, all of the communications are handled inside the player socket integration component. And inside here, I have this function to process all of my combat messages. So previously we looked into initiate attack, and now we're also getting these messages saying that the combat is too far away or the combat is not facing, which really means that the target is too far away or your character is not facing the target. So I do that li little translation right here and then I grab my widget, uh, the active notification, and then I ask it to display this new message. So let's have a look at that function inside the active notification. So uh, this is the widget that we just looked at earlier, right? So inside the graph, I've just created one function, it's called display, and it takes into uh, in this input parameter, say notification. I, I do want to keep it generic so that in the future, uh, I'll potentially um, display other notifications here as well. Um, and all I do is basically get my text box message component and I set the text, I update the text to that notification. And then I ask to play my pop-up animation that we looked at earlier as well. And that's it, that's all I needed to do in order to um, update that message to the user. Just for reference, let's have a look at the backend server to see um, how that actually works. So this is my Java server. So you can see that some of my validation here is uh, validate position location. Uh, so this just happens part of uh, the combat implementation. And I'm going to validate the uh, range and whether I'm facing the target. So uh, let's have a look at how we do that. So uh, within range, it's quite simple really. So I have myself two motions. Uh, the first motion is uh, my player's motion. The second motion is uh, the monster or the other actor that I'm trying to attack. And all I need to do is just check whether the, the difference between uh, the two uh, motions is within a given uh, threshold. So I'm able to uh, use this function to achieve that. And uh, for the angle uh, validation, it's a little bit uh, different. It's actually a little bit more tricky, but it's also quite interesting. So uh, this is the equation that I used here. Um, and it's about getting the dot product essentially and um, evaluating the uh, direction for those um, uh, vectors. So um, I managed to find these equations online, I had to just modify a little bit. So um, this is how I achieve it. I have also referenced it inside the post if you would like to uh, try and apply it in your own project. You shouldn't find it too difficult to translate this into other programming languages so it could actually be still useful for you. So once you've done those validations you can see I've got these two booleans here. Uh, I just check if um, and either one of those is invalid, uh, then I'm going to just check, have I sent a notification to the user in the last three seconds? And if I haven't, I'm going to uh, basically uh, send uh, this um, validation notification. So you can see I've got the waiting for uh, the combat too far. So for example, if both the um, distance and the angle validation is invalid, I will prioritize um, saying that the target is too far. And you can see inside here uh, that all I'm doing is specifying the message type of combat too far. So you can see there's the string over there. Uh, and that's how I get that message sent across to my server. So next, perhaps we'll look at how I managed to attack the nearest monster. And I've managed to do this through the actions component. So inside here, this is where I have my input actions for attack. And the first thing that I do is just make sure that I have some uh, monsters nearby. And if I do, uh, I'm going to try and find the, the closest one. Okay, so uh, the way I do that is grab the owner and get the actor's location. So what that does, it actually uh, takes my, so inside my um, character blueprint, so there's my player character blueprint. I have the component, so for the actions component. So when I grab my owner, uh, it pulls my player character bl blueprint, and then I get the uh, player's uh, actor's location. Okay, so I set that as a local variable, and then I grab all actors of class. So all of my monsters uh, have a parent class of actor base blueprint, 
and uh, that's how I'm able to find it. So you're able to also uh, leverage this function. So I'm actually able to use uh, my near uh, nearby mobs, but I decided to use this one as it's just a more generic way of achieving this. But for me, I'll also just need to make sure that the actor ID on uh, those blueprints is not empty because my monsters will always have uh, a mob UUID on uh, this um, variable. So uh, I basically iterate through all of these actors. Uh, I just filter to make sure that it is in fact my monsters. And then I grab their actor locations. Um, in Unreal, we have this uh, distance uh, function available so that if we provide two vectors, we're able to get this um, distance as a float. So all I need to do now is just make sure that uh, it's uh, smaller than whatever uh, current min I have. So inside my local variables, I create this current min and then I provide it a very high default value. Um, so the, the first... Um, item that we search for will always go inside this current min and I always grab the reference of that target as well. So then I basically iterate through this entire list and I just keep a reference of which one is the closest monster to my character. And when I'm done, I simply uh, return back this closest target. So the first one would be inside uh, this actor base blueprint where I've created a function for set actor selected. Uh, so you can see that in this function, I just um, provide an input, which is a Boolean to uh, specify whether I want this target selected or not. And if it's true, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this actor select component. So you can just grab it out like this. And uh, you can see I'm setting the in, in class as the actor select. And when I want to unselect this target, I'm just gonna set this to null. So that's what toggles the visibility of that circle. And let's have a look at this component as well. So that's basically it. What I'll do is I'll just go through the demo one more time. And uh, you can see the server starting in the background, which will control the mobs. Um, I'll also just demonstrate my max HP change. So there's my uh, max HP with the weapon equipped. When I take it off, it goes down to 250. When I equip it again, it goes to 350. And uh, you'll be able to see my uh, HP is just re regenerating in the background through the backend server. So um, also there's the um, magic circle actor, which is um, just drawn at my target's feet. Um, and you're also able to see the different validations, which will not be sent more than once every three seconds. So um, that's just happening in the back end as well. Uh, so there it is. And you can see uh, that the uh, notification message is just fading away over time. So you can see the combat is starting to take a bit more shape now. Um, so there's, um, yeah, it's starting to, to be a bit more interesting, I guess. And um, soon, yeah, we've got more stuff to do. Um, so for example, I might want to implement some basic uh, AI for the mobs to just attack me back, for example. Maybe they'll want to scout the area or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, so lots of uh, changes I could make on those. Um, I could also implement an XP and a level system so that when I kill a mob, it gives me some XP. I can level up and with that in mind, perhaps a class hierarchy as well. So uh, lots of interesting things to look forward to as well as potentially even deploying this, um, just making it more available, right? Uh, going through that journey. So uh, yeah, interesting things to come. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Thanks. Wait.